Join me today as I try my very first Ban Mi in Saigon, where I even get to try making my own. I then head to the most famous Ban Mi spot in Saigon to see if it really is the best in the city. Let's do it. I'm here to have my first proper Ban Mi sandwich in Saigon. I've come to a place called Ban Mi Huang Hua. It's situated just on a little side street. The owners have already said hi, are very nice, and it looks pretty good. So let's check out the menu and see what we're gonna order. All right, guys, this is it. It's still a little street stall, but you have seats sprawled out onto the street. And then the, I guess this is their house in the background where they make the bread. I can already see, I've already spotted it, the banh mi here. And actually, it looks like they bake their own bread. You make your own bread? <laughs> Look at this, a stool of bread, and he's just giving it the final slice. So I guess this is proving here, and he's just giving it the final slices before it will go in the oven. We've got the ovens here. Good to see they're making their own bread, and actually, look, you have trays of freshly baked bread here, and let me tell you, the smell of freshly baked bread is amazing. So I already know this place is going to be good. And in they go, it was the scoring just before the oven. I thought this was just a storage place, but it's a giant oven. In they go. So when they're finished, they come out this beautiful golden brown. And you can see the slits where he gave the slits. Like, it opens up and creates that signature look. Okay, regarding the menu, you have what I would call traditional, or not traditional, but maybe most common with the cured meats. You have roast pork, you have chicken and sauce, you have meatball or shumai, tuna, barbecue pork. So it's decisions, decisions. I think at the next stop, we'll try the original one. That's kind of what I had in my head. So I'm thinking either the meatballs or the barbecue pork. And then you have two prices. You have standard price and then the special. And the special will just be more meat, essentially. And this place even has the photo menu. And it is in Vietnamese and in English. So really, you can't go wrong here. Not all places have that but you can kind of associate the names with what they are. So I'm thinking either Shumai or <laughs> Fit Nguong. I've got a little dog. Now, they're always friendly with me now. People keep rocking up on bikes, parking out in front and coming to order. Can I order? Yeah. Can I order um, barbecue pork special? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, I've just ordered. I'll let them clear the orders ahead of me first. Just come in and I will show you them making it. But the smell, it just takes me back to when I was a kid, walking past the bakeries. I mean, you don't really get them anymore in Europe, well, in the UK, I guess. But when I have this memory of going to France, because Alderney is very close to France, going across to France and walking past the bakeries as a kid and smelling the smell of fresh bread. It's amazing how food can transport you just with the smell to another place and another time. And well, this is the benefit of coming to a little family run place. You get to come inside, talk to them. Wish I could speak Vietnamese, to be honest. And uh, yeah, engage a bit more. But I love that this place is not just a banh mi school. It is a bakery as well, making their own bread. Love it. And we've got more action going on down here where they're actually making the dough itself. You can see the huge bags of flour on the side. And then they're rolling up those baguettes. Masters. <laughs> me? Right, he wants me. You show me. He wants me to try it. Oh my god. That is a skill. <laughs> so he did something like this. Put it out. No. <laughs> right, let's try again. Right. So down, down, out, out. Down, down, out, out. I don't think I'm going to get a job here. It looks terrible. <laughs> it looks like something the dog made. Yeah, it's harder than it looks. Thank you, thank you. Pure skill. Oh, that was harder than it looked. The dough is light, it's soft, and it's fluffy. And they just move it and well, for me, it was sticking to my hands, but uh, yeah, not a very good job at that. And then when it's ready, it goes to prove 
for, I guess, a couple of hours. They'll expand a little bit, and then they'll look like what the guy had when he was slicing them before they go into the oven. I just want to show you guys the setup. So, look at this stack of cured meats here. All different types of salamis and cured meats and hams. We have the pickled vegetables, some chili, coriander. This is, I guess, lard. The pate, which is synonymous with banh mi. Little bit of roast pork here. Pork floss, two types of pork floss, eggs. And then I think this is, this is barbecue pork, chicken and then the roast pork, and you can just see it hanging in the top. And yeah, just want to show you the section and the setup. The barbecued pork looks damn good. Right, I've got the banh mi. Let's get it open and have a look. Now you can see that huge, huge, but so light baguette. Much bigger than I expected, actually. Like a proper sub, right? Let's just have a look inside. Oh, look at that. Got that barbecued pork, and you can see the char on the outside of it, you just know that's going to give incredible flavour. And then you've got the pickles and the sauce that they put on it. They put two types of sauce on it. One, I, well, to be honest, I don't know what it is, so we'll have to try it. But then there was a red, maybe chilli style one. So a bit of spice in there too. But it looks incredible. All right, I'm just sat outside in front, actually. As I said, they have a few seats out here, which is quite nice. I have noticed not everywhere has that. Huge. I feel like I want to crush it down and kind of squash all those juices into the bread. You just know that's going to be good. As I was saying, or as I showed, this one doesn't have the pate in. The traditional, the one with the pate is in the cold cut one. So we will try that next. But my mouth is watering now for this one. You can just hear how crispy it is. Anyway, let's stop talking. Let's eat. Mmm got a proper big bite there but i just absolutely love it the texture the bread is crunchy on the outside light and fluffy on the inside as you imagine and then you get the crunch of the pickles in there of the radish the daikon and the cucumber a little bit of carrot that comes with sourness of course because they're pickled that black dark sauce is sweet and then you get the spiciness that comes from the the chili that's a pretty damn good sandwich Mm. Okay, that bite, they must have put some slices of the chili in there. Whoa, real spicy kick. I guess if you don't like spicy too much, you need to let them know. But the char on the outside of those barbecue pork balls, so good, barbecue flavor. Sweet and salty, soft, nice texture. It's been ground quite coarsely, so you get a nice chew to it. I did hear them ask if they want chili or no chili, so I didn't get that choice, but luckily I like spicy food. And this one seemed to be the most popular choice. When I saw them making them, all of the orders were for the barbecue pork, little pork balls. They're a little bit like shumai, I guess, but they're more like little pork patties, which have been grilled on the grill. So this one may be famous for this type of banh mi, but wow. And that dark sauce is sweet and salty. Definitely soy sauce in there, maybe sweet soy sauce too, but there is sugar in there, which is balanced. That's the thing, I don't mind sweetness when it's balanced. If you've watched me before on my channel, you'll see that I don't really like sweet food and savory, but when it's balanced with the pickles, with the saltiness, hey, it works. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh man, so, so good. 48,000 dong, that's what, not even two pounds, probably two dollars. Absolutely crazy. Amazing flavor, but we have one more to try. We need to go and try the most traditional, potentially the most famous one in Saigon. Let's do it. Can I have one banh mi, please? Yes, please. Thank you. Now, you know this place is the famous place because it's only just opened 
and there's already a queue here. You only get a choice of one type of banh mi, and that is the one with the cold cuts and the pate. 65,000, it's a lot more expensive than all of the other banh mi that I've seen, the one we've just had, and then all the ones that I see on the street. So is that because it's the most famous or is that because it's the most tasty? Let's find out. All right, this is the station, the making station. For some were so busy, it's pretty small. Again, like we saw in the last place, you have all of the cold cuts. Just, I mean, they look absolutely incredible. Got the baguettes lined up. Also, have the oven here to keep them warm. You've got roast pork. Well, he's making it here. The cold cuts go in, the roast pork go in. There's more cold cuts, then the pate, or more pate, should I say, on top. Thank you. Right. Next one in hand. Need to just find the space for it. It's a little bit more mechanical in there, as you would expect, if it's the most famous and they are churning them out all day. You need to have a pretty good process going for that. But that won't take anything away from the flavor, I'm sure. It all looked incredible. Let's find a place to eat it. I've just opened this one up and if I thought the other one was big, this one is absolutely huge. And it, it comes with pickles on the side, which is good. So that means, well, the pickles, if they're in there, would make the bread soggy. So they give them on the side. So if you don't eat it straight away, it doesn't reduce the quality. So I've come to the park just in the middle of the city. It's not the nicest park I've ever seen, but I wanted to get off the street to come and eat this one. Let's get some of those pickles in there because you do need the pickles. It's so rich, so much going on that you need the pickles to cut through it especially with this one with the pate. So we've got spring onion, radish or daikon, cucumber, and as you would expect in this country, coriander in there as well. All right, there she is, ready to be eaten. <laughs> oh, look at that. Ridiculous. All right, let's get stuck in. Another mammoth, mammoth portion. Mmm, wow. Straight away, you see the cold cuts, all different types of pork, roast pork, hams, bacons, a little bit of lean white roast pork in there as well, pork floss. The pate, obviously another type of pork, I think I counted seven different types of pork in there. All different flavors, all different textures. Some are plain, some are peppery. I'm not gonna lie, guys. It's definitely, definitely worth the price. And you'd think with all of that meat in there, it'd be dry, but it's not dry at all because the pate keeps it moist, but also the cold cuts are cooked really nicely. So they are moist in themselves, they're not dry. It's rich, it's porky, it's soft, it's chewy, it's crunchy. It's salty, it's slightly sweet, it's sour, it's got a bit of spice in there. Everything, everything you want a sandwich to be. And on top of all of that, it is absolutely jam packed. Let me tell you that. You are paying two to three times more than ones I've seen on the street, but I'm guessing they don't come with that much in. But the quality of each of those ingredients, the pate, is soft, creamy, buttery, rich. The cold cuts, they're sliced thinly, so there's a nice texture to them. The pork floss, slightly, not chewy, but there's a, a different type of texture to it, but it's so rich of that pork, it gives so much depth of flavor, all wrapped in that soft, pillowy, light and fluffy, crunchy on the outside, banh mi. I've got to say, it's the Formula One of sandwiches, I think. Barbecue pork, cannot complain at all. But this one with the cold cuts, with the pate, the pate makes such a difference. Just takes it to the next level. I would say you have to eat both, of course. I can see why this one is famous. This one is famous for a reason and it's not, it's not just because of the name, it is because of the quality and it was busy with locals and with tourists. It's not just a tourist hotspot. Of course, plenty of tourists go there, but my God, what a sandwich. Oh, what a food experience. I'm absolutely stuffed. Incredible banh mi all around. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.